Can you sit on a fast rotating chair for straight 15 minutes? If you can't, then I have bad news for you. You cannot become a Taikonaut because it is one of the tests required to pass, called rotation chair training. PLA Taikonaut Corps was established in 1998. Since its establishment, China has sent 14 Taikonauts on seven missions into space. Today, China has more than 25 fully trained Taikonauts, each one capable of completing a mission on their own. That means there are some people who have gone through the same rigorous tough training but haven't had their chance to reach stars. In today's episode, we're breaking into what exactly you need to become a Taikonaut. This is Race to Space. If you like watching content regarding China's space program, consider subscribing. The selection of a Taikonaut made based on aspects such as nationality, experience, age, individual characteristics, physical performance, and mental health. The synergy or compatibility among different members is also a big factor if we talk about gender and nationality. You must be a Chinese citizen to become a Taikonaut. You can be either a man or a woman, but if you're a woman, you have to be married. According to the deputy commander of China's human spaceflight, China believes that married women would be more physically and psychologically mature. During Taikonaut selections, age range has to be between 25 and 35. Now, let's talk about physical and medical requirement. China always intend to seek international cooperation. That's why you must be able to spend long periods in space. Candidates had to size between 160 meters and 172 meters. Also, China searches for Taikonaut candidates between 55 kilograms and 70 kilograms. China doesn't communicate about other requirements, but of course, there are advanced medical tests of all of the body. Like other space agencies, your visual acuity must be perfect and your blood pressure has to be normal. There are about 43 aspects including age, height, education, and professional background just in basic evaluation, said Huang. She added physical evaluation is about clinical and physical functions, such as cardiopulmonary function and endurance to the space environment. There are 17 physical checks just to test endurance and adaptation to the space environment. Testing of the vestibular function is also one of the physical checks. Huang explained that astronauts usually experience a unique physical reaction in the orbit during the first three days in space, similar to car sickness or seasickness. Candidates who have weak vestibular function can become very dizzy and even vomit. She also said it's incredibly difficult to become an astronaut. A bachelor's degree from college is required, but CNSA's officials said they look for master's degrees in engineering or a PhD. Nevertheless, since the beginning of the Chinese manned spaceflight program, the best way to become a Taikonaut is to be an experienced pilot of the Air Force with a university high degree. The best way to become a Taikonaut is to be an experienced pilot of the Air Force for men or a military transport pilot for women. But the Taikonaut applications are now opened to people with a scientific or engineering work experience in the space industry, search entities, or university. CNSA doesn't communicate about spoken language requirement, but it's likely that you must speak Chinese and English, and that speaking Russian is an asset given that China wants to increase international cooperation. Flying experience is also under consideration during the selections. Taikonaut candidates had to have at least 600 flight hours experience, but it's likely that the Chinese space agency expects more, given that the Taikonauts recruited in 2009 had an average of 1,270 flight hours experience. According to Huang, the pilot astronauts need to meet the strictest requirements, and they are chosen from active aviators. She said engineers and payload specialists have different requirements, less strict but still many. It's a process to select from the best of the best, The training of a Taikonaut is extremely tough and challenging. They're required to train in a hundred of subjects in eight discipline, which lasts thousands of hours. Above all, Taikonauts have to be versatile. They may be able to wear many hats like scientist, housekeeper, farmer, engineer, and even a teacher. Back in 2013, Wang Yeping, China's second female Taikonaut, taught a class from the space station to 60 million students back on Earth. Huang led the team to develop over a hundred types of training in eight categories in various fields such as medicine, physics, psychology, science, and engineering. 
She also trained the Shenzhou 12 Taikonauts underwater to mimic the microgravity environment as there are extravehicular activities for the mission this time. They are trained for four hours each time underwater, donning spacesuits over 200 kilograms, said Huang. It's grueling for our Taikonauts. In the early sessions, Tang said he could not even hold chopsticks after the training. Tang has never been to the space before. The astronauts are exposed to the pull of hypergravity when spaceships ascend and return. During the hypergravity period, the blood moves to the legs, causing possible loss of vision and consciousness. So, the training on tolerance to hypergravity, or high-G training, is also essential. All male and female Taikonauts have to pass the 8G criterion, which means they should be able to bear eight times the gravity force of their own body weight. The Taikonauts go through it once every half a year. As long as they are professional astronauts, it's their duty to keep going through the training, ready for the mission calls until the moment they retire. PLA Taikonaut Corps has to make sure that Chinese astronauts are fully trained to operate the spacesuit. A Chinese spacesuit takes three and a half years to develop and the amount of technology involved is astounding. The weight of Chinese spacesuit is 120 kilograms, equivalent to carrying a baby elephant. Each spacesuit is like a small spacesuit in itself and it is designed to provide a condition suitable for Taikonauts to survive and operate in space. Let's talk about the most experienced Taikonauts from China so we can understand the journey from the lens of experienced professionals. In the summer of 1996, 31-year-old Yang Li Wei was informed that he could participate in the first round of physical examinations for China's space program. He had no idea at the time that he would go on to become the first Chinese person to go beyond the Earth's atmosphere. After passing the first round of tests, he was called to Beijing for the second round. Yang recalls it as, I was so thrilled that I went three days before schedule and the nurse made fun of me for being too proactive. It has been 18 years since he made history. During that time, he has witnessed the growth of China's manned spacecraft program. He has become one of the national heroes. On January 4, 2018, Yang, together with 10 other Taikonauts, renewed their oath before a national flag at the China Astronaut Research and Training Center. I am willing to devote my whole life to manned spacecraft endeavor with undaunted courage and selflessness. That year marked the 20th anniversary of the establishment of the Taikonaut Corps of the People's Liberation Army PLA of China. I've been to space three times, but I still have more goals and dreams. As we said in our oath 20 years ago, we will continue to face new tasks and challenges, said Jing Haiping, who has flown on three missions, Shenzhou 7 in 2008, Shenzhou 9 in 2012, and Shenzhou 11 in 2016. The names of Taikonauts who have completed the six manned spaceflight missions are household names, but behind them are several unsung pilots who haven't had the chance to fly but are no less dedicated to China's space mission. Among the first batch of 14 Taikonauts, eight people have been to space, five retired, while Deng Qing Ming is the only one among them who is still in active service but has not been on a mission. Deng has been the backup astronaut for three missions. The closest he got to flying was the Shenzhou 11 mission in 2016. However, the day before the launch he was told to stand down, but he didn't complain. Right after Shenzhou 11 was launched, Deng devoted himself to ground support work. To sum up, we hope this episode inspired you in some way, and we hope you have learned what the criteria to become a Taikonaut is and what are the training sessions that one goes through to become a Taikonaut. Make sure to subscribe to this channel, and we'll see you in the next one.